All right, everybody. Let me get the camera set in its little, well, not camera phone. There we go. All right, so what I'm going to make today is, you can call it chicken and dumplings if you want. It's a crock pot meal, but I don't feel like using the crock pot like I always do. I think I'm going to use my Dutch oven, which is over there that I just re-seasoned. All right, so the first thing you want to do, you want to take your knives, get them out of your way for one. Take your knife, probably won't need it for this chicken, but you might, never know. I'm going to take these out, and then I'm going to give them a seasoning. I already started seasoning them the other day, because I was going to use them for something else. So there's a little garlic and a little bit of paprika on these. I think that's enough for four people. I think I'm going to go grab more chicken. I'm going to turn on, nope, I don't want more chicken, because I don't have any thawed. Darn. Alright, so let me grab my seasoning real quick. That's gonna be garlic, some paprika, and the pepper, which, well, maybe not pepper because I don't see it. Now there's pepper at the table. Alright, so. Always wanna season before you use it. Always. A little bit of salt. A little bit of smoked paprika. A little bit of garlic. I want to do that to both sides of this meat. Flip it. And rinse your hands off so you don't, you know, put chicken hands all over your spices. So salt. Garlic. Paprika. And pepper. Alrighty. Now that that's done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring it over to my stove right here. I hope it can be seen pretty well there. Yeah, it looks like it's in, in view. So I already have my stove on. I'm just gonna turn this up to high. Let that start heating up just a little bit. And I'll be right here to cut this up while that's heating. So, you can stack them if you want to cut them that way. Doesn't matter. Doesn't even matter how you cut them because these are going to cook for so long in this recipe that they're going to be cooked fully no matter what. The only thing you want to worry about, you know, maybe some bite size size pieces because uh, it's just easier to eat bite size. So. And this is a this is a hearty meal. This is something that's gonna really fill you up also. So right, last little piece. Now here, here's a tip when you're cutting chicken. This top side that you know is kind of glossy, if you flip it over to the opposite side, the inside of the breast that doesn't have that outer membrane of skin, it actually cuts a lot easier from this side, even if you have an extremely sharp knife because you don't have that membrane to start out going through. It's kind of like trying to cut a tomato. So, anyhow, there's that. I'm gonna grab one more spice here in a second to show you what that one is, because that's my, call it my secret spice, I guess. Oh, that one's empty. So, where's another one? Uh-oh. Well, I didn't find the one I was looking for, so it's ground time that I'm going to use in this one. Usually I use uh, not ground time, just normal. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of that in there with that. And uh, this is what's going to give it its savory flavor. So you take your, your stuff, give it a little quick mix up with that. And we're going to go directly into the pan. Now that this is in the pan, I'm just going to do what food does in the pan. 
I'll use it. Just want to level it out. So that the pieces, you know, just trying to brown them, really. It's going to give your food a lot more flavor to brown the meat. And once again, it's chicken and dumplings. So right now we're doing the chicken. That's going to sit there and do a little cooking. Well, I come back over here and I get the other part of this ready. And I make sure my knife is nice and sharp. Never sharpen a knife this direction, okay, ever, towards yourself. Even though when you're in a restaurant, working in a restaurant, they tell you you have to cut this way. Or sharpen this. Forget that. I'm not trying to cut my belly open. I always tell them, you know what, if you can't pay attention to the fact that I'm sharpening my knife over the counter and watch out to not get cut open, then you shouldn't be in the kitchen. So, cut your nice sharp knife. This is all going in the same pot at the same time. So I'm going to cut this off. Peel off. I always take that one thick layer off just because it's easier to peel it. And maybe you lose a little bit of onion to it, but that little outside edge of onion, eh, I don't care. Don't care at all. Plus, you know, how can you beat peeling an onion quick and easy like that? So, anyhow, I'm going to go with a big chunk of it. I think I might next time add more onion. I usually add a bigger onion. It's just the one I grab. So. Alright, I'm going to put these directly in the pan with those. I definitely want more onion in there, so I'm grabbing another onion from the pantry. Oh, these onions are so strong, burning my eyes. There's a little tip if you have a strike in your matches or anything of that sort around you. You put a couple of those in your mouth, one on each side of your mouth, and you just hold those there with your teeth or whatever, sulfur side out, and that sulfur will actually absorb the sulfur coming out of these onions that's getting into your eyes. The sulfur that comes out of here and gets into your eyes, when it gets into your eyes, it creates a hydrochloric acid almost. So that's what makes your eyes burn. Alright, that's going in. Alright. So I'm also going to add a little bit of celery because I have it left over from Thanksgiving and celery kind of tastes good anyhow. I'm not really going to do anything but take a couple of these stalks off and put those directly in there because I'm not going to eat the celery. Oh, my eyes are burning like crazy from that onion. Holy hell. <laughs> Holy hell. That's an oxymoron right there. Alright, so I'm just going to put them in just like this. Break them in half if you want. So those are in there with that. That's all brown and we're at away. We're going to come back here for a second. Burning eyes, burning eyes, burning eyes. I see. See that browning there? That browning actually gives you... We can call it a stew also, but I think they're chicken and dumplings here a little more flavor. And you, you don't have to cook it like that either. It just helps. So, now that I've got that going in there, i got a couple more ingredients I have to add. I'm going to need my can opener. I want to add a little bit of time to this. Make sure you don't run out of time. You know, today I'm going to add a little bit of rosemary to this. I mean, that's not much, but guess what? I'm not even going to use that. You know why? Because here's my fresh rosemary. I might as well use that. I'm just going to take the sprig, break the end off. 
if you even can. So take that, throw it right in like this. And you don't mind a couple of little pieces coming off because they'll help season it so you can break that off and just shove that right in there like that. So now that that's there, I've got my can opener and my can of cream of chicken soup. That's the next item to put in there. Now, usually you can use two of the small soup cans if you want. Or you can just get the one family can like I did. The can is not wanting, but okay, holy hell. There's that oxymoron again. Yes, it's thick. Now I want to get all of that out of the can. Put directly in. Okay. The last ingredient for right now is some chicken broth. And uh, later on I guess I can add some more water to it if I need to, but that's only if I really need to. Maybe my can opener might be broken. I don't know. It's not wanting to work correctly. Alright, so I'll take that, mix it around while I add this in to you know, help deglaze the pan a little bit. Ooh. And that deglazing the pan actually gives us a much darker color to it. So see how the color changed to a darker color? Now what I want to do is I'm going to want to add a little bit of water to this. I'm going to do it now, and then I'll do a little bit more when I'm when it's done. Of course, I didn't measure. So, I've already got my oven on. It's set to 325. Normally, a lot of people will take their Dutch oven, put it outside in their fire pit or whatnot, and I just don't feel like making a fire and doing all of that today. So, this is going in the oven at 325 for four or five hours. I mean, you can do it at a lower temperature. It doesn't have to be 325. Like right now, I guess I'll just turn it down to, let's go 305 since that's where it stopped. Now the last ingredient for this will be biscuits. What you do is you take either a package or two of biscuit and you tear them in half and you just layer them all through here about a half an hour before they're done. And when once you're done with that, after a half an hour, you've got that crust over the top, you call that the dumplings I guess, but this is just an easy way. I'm going to put my very hot lid on there. Let me grab my tool. I don't know if this is going to make it any easier because uh, this is going to be really hot over here. Oh, that is hot. That's not going to work. I need a pot holder. That would work great if I was outside, you know? So I'm going to turn off the fire. Stupid door burned me. All right, so this is going to go directly in here. Pretty much the middle rack. It weighs like 10 pounds, I think. Either. Guess I'm using the big turkey rack. Alright, so it's in there. Just like that in the bottom. And it's gonna be in there for a few hours. So until that's done at dinner time tonight, another four, five, six hours from now, I won't be able to show you what it looks like finished. But when it's finished, it'll have, like I said, biscuits layer on top. Just rip them apart, or you can throw them in whole. Either way, but they're good. So, enjoy. Yummy, yum, yum.